director of the Ryan Center, and uh, I've been working with Bill, Bill Joins, um, and trying to learn a little bit more about his experiments and helping to run them. I'm Bill Joins. I'm a researcher here at the Ryan Center, and we have a grant from the Beal Foundation for doing this work that we've had for a couple of years or more. Excellent. And you're going to explain some of the equipment that you yes. use in the experiment. <clears throat> we measure uh, mainly light. It's, uh, it'll be at the upper end of the visible spectrum extending into the UV range that the human eye doesn't detect. So that's our sensitive equipment. It's in the dark room here. We'll go in there next. But we monitor it and turn on the equipment from this room. And uh, on the left over there is the one that's lit up is the photoelectric, thermoelectric, excuse me, cooler that we have for the photomultiplier tube detector. It cools it down to close to minus 30 degrees C. Excellent. And to do that so that the baseline will be very, very low. And so we turned that on. It's been cooling for a couple of hours. John turned it on earlier. Underneath that, we turn on the high voltage to the photomultiplier tube. And then when we get inside, I'll show you. But well, we open a uh, iris and uh, shutter, you know, it opens the light into the photomultiplier tube. If one photon of light comes in and strikes the sensitive surface, it dislodges several electrons. Those electrons are accelerated to the next, what we call a dynode, and they knock off many more electrons. And it finally goes up, ricochets from one side to the other, knocking off more electrons. That one photon will give you an appreciable current flow out that we monitor. And so you can actually count photons. So the baseline we usually get is about uh, maybe five to seven or eight photons per second would be the baseline when it's cool. When people are inside, you might get 10 to 15 due to just body heat, perhaps. And then if we get a uh, subject who can emit light, it can be anywhere from 40 to 60 to 2,000 to 800,000 that we've had. So. so this is the photomultiplier tube. It's a long canister and the high voltage is applied to it when you turn the switch on. It's cooling now down. The shutter is right here. And so whoever's going to be in here should see how the shutter works. You pull this all the way out. It opens the shutter. We don't open it when it's right in here because it's a very sensitive surface. Then when the test is over, we close the shutter. Then we can turn the lights back on. We like to see what happens in the UV because it looks like that only a few people can generate the UV. We've had, uh, let's see, I guess you would say four people. Yeah. And that's in the past 30 years. Wow. Started, I had to leave the room <laughs> because it was a little, um, little more than I was used to without grounding and preparing. Um, and so I settled a little bit, and I was, uh, I was very surprised, pleasantly surprised oh, by exactly. it. Um, and then I settled in later on, so I was very happy. started is we were taking the baseline here. Now normally our baseline when we're taking it runs around from anywhere from 4 to 10, maybe 12. Yours was running in the range of about 20 to 50. Interesting. First standard baseline of mm -hmm. photon emissions. Interesting. I don't know if you've ever seen that level of baseline before, Bill. Not really, no. no. Okay. And this is a more normal baseline for us. Yes, I knew to uh, uh, calm uh, the uh, cool and good feeling of the energy before I e excited it again. That's uh, what we were thinking, yeah, that you were relaxing, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, because I wanted to get in your ultraviolet range and not to get mm -hmm. in your infrared range, so I, I needed to uh, calm the electricity down. So that's what you were doing after we started. You got, you released some? You, I'm wondering what, what the process was when we first started. Well, when I first started, I knew that my blood pressure and heart rate was up uh, because mm -hmm. I was um, already in that stage of 
you know, exciting the energy. So once I cooled it down, I, I got it into the normal range that I usually do uh, prior to running a form, uh, mm -hmm. our bioenergy mm -hmm. forms, then I knew I was ready to create the bioenergy form for you. Mm -hmm. That's Okay, that's all right. This, this spike, like for example this one here, it's substantially above where our baseline was right. That's when I started uh, doing circular chi and a form. I was wondering if that might be more here. Well, that's when I took the actual circular form and I made it into a vortex and I saw the the, uh, the vortex spinning with the, the block lines and I just let myself move into electrical equipment. You let yourself move into the electrical equipment? Yes. I felt the energy stream uh, once I had that established. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. The way you describe it is very interesting. And we got a huge spike there. That's a huge I, spike. Well, yeah, this is quite significant here, this jump from here to here, and then the fact that it's wide, and then the spike, and then it goes back down when you stopped, and then stayed there, and then goes back up again. That's quite impressive. To see something where it goes up and maintains a high level, and then drops back down, and then goes back up and maintains a high level, like this is, yeah. mm -hmm. that's unusual. Well, what I did at that point, uh, when you told me to, there was another spike coming, mm -hmm. I said, well, then, then let my, uh, my spirit being fill the room. And so I became the room, and then I saw you guys out here, and what you were talking about, and then I filled the building, and I saw the uh, traffic outside and everything a little bit. Uh, I tried not to focus too intently. I kept within my circular cylinder form, and uh, it felt larger than my body. Then there was one point where I filled the cylinder up to the top and bottom, and that's when you told me about a spike. These results are what in science we call very interesting. But this, this is quite impressive. Well, you know, we want to maintain the integrity within the electricity form mm. so we can hold it for longer periods of time. That's good, yeah, right. Because mm. then it has a preciseness and you can actually do something with this form's energy, right. the pressure and density mm. of it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, my electrical intention uh, is just put into my bioenergy stream. And there's many streams out there that you have to have more precision over time and you become skilled at gently moving into that stream. How long you can maintain it is the true power of the form, mm -hmm. as Sifu Jones would say. <laughs> <laughs>